Hello and welcome to this let's play of Aquinox. So yeah, first um first thing, yeah, I just had to replace my hard drive again. And <laughs> I've been spending hours trying to get my microphone working. Uh until I found out that I hadn't set in traps to, to record external input. I, I can't believe I did that again. So yeah, um... So it means I lost... everything that happened. Fortunately, it wasn't much. I'm still going to be doing the Devil Witcher Knight Let's Play, and yeah, I think I'll still be doing Ultima 5. <laughs> But this Let's Play, I was planning to do it right before my hard drive just went up and flipped me off and decided to die on me. So, let's do this one, Aquinox. Hopefully the cutscene will record. Loading data. Been a while since I played this game. Yep. I think I've explained this before, it's kind of a first person shooter flight sim type thing. It looks like it's recording, so excellent. Enjoy the cutscene. I breathed in the cool, pure air, tasting the rich oxygen and nitrogen. My eyes filled with tears. The sun hovered behind the horizon like an orange fireball. Sunny, that was the latest buzzword. It was talked about now with every breath, and suddenly I knew what it really meant. I stretched out my hand to feel the warmth, to touch its face. Then the timer squealed and a voice roared in my ear. Simulation room S23, your time is up. Please move to the fast decompression chamber. Two hours later, I was back at the helm of my ship, the Zucubus, leaving the pleasure centers of the Malay archipelago behind. The nano-fabric of my pilot's seat massaged my body as I accelerated on full dipole drive, spearing into the black heart of the lifeless ocean like a nightmare shattering a dream. But the oceans were no longer as dead as they seemed. Scientists brewed gene cocktails and chromosome soups without sanction, rebreeding every life form within range of their test tubes. Mighty sharks, dolphins, even the greatest carnivores that ever lived. Primordial beasts that had terrorized the oceans 150 million years ago. The scientists did what they pleased, including creating new branches of life where evolution refused to go. They earned so many credits with their tinkering that even the most powerful computers struggled to keep up with the total. But behind the glittering facade of tungsten, titanium, and niobium, the calcareous whole of human existence was crumbling. The frequency of mass disasters increased dramatically. The muck runners, psychotics, high-tech slave drivers, gene adulterators, and slick techno dealers prowled everywhere, plunging habitats and dwellings into chaos. My name is Emerald Deadeye Flint. I'm tracking down the remaining bions scattered throughout the oceans. Each one a potent germ posing danger to the world of Aqua. I carry out the Biont mission with my four wing pilots, Grange, Piccolini, Harper, and Bonham, and my onboard computer, Sal. My clients are international, representing every government. appeared out of nowhere five years ago, aiming to extinguish human life in the oceans, I had no objection. On the other hand, it didn't hurt my cash box any to give humanity a short reprieve, so I went for the credits. But during the destruction of the Bayon stronghold off Australia, called the Servion, my friend Hong Long sacrificed her own life so I could place the final explosive charge. Now I don't sleep too easy. And I won't until every last remnant of the Bion threat has been eliminated. My 
last job was in Neapolis, the capital of the Atlantic Federation. Neapolis, home to the eccentric techno-bourgeois, a genetically zapped and nanotuned group wasting their senseless lives trying to establish the optimal political system in Aqua. All the while, Neapolis sinks deeper and deeper into a slick of pseudo-democracy, racism, techno-devotion, and corruption. Now the new lie, who call themselves Democrats, are making the capital ungovernable, leading only to endless discussions, bureaucratic acrobatics, and a weakened city with a leaderless army. I was glad I was finished there and on my way to the tornado zone in the eastern Pacific. People take drugs in the tornado zone instead of ingesting nanorobots for cures, and their free-thinking attitude translates into free action as well. I was homesick, and I missed every screwball and dangerous freak who'd be waiting there to greet me. On the way, I made a short side trip to the Argentine basin to see my friend, El Topo, the mole. Nobody pulls strings like El Topo, who can get almost anything done behind the politicians' backs. El Topo murmured something to me about an important job, a secret scientific sensation. I got a little bored until he came to the part about earning lots of credits. So I went to Magellan and spent a few hard hours at Mariner's Pride, a rotten worker's dive, where I downed mid-brain assassins with a few old friends. Just as the world turned into the carousel I was hoping to ride, I caught sight of some jerk clearing off with the Zuka bus. I had never thought about that happening. Someone just stealing my ship out from under my nose. But there it went. Suddenly I was back to square one again in my old stomping ground. Broke, exhausted, and listing heavily. I don't recall the cutscene being that long. <laughs> um, oh wait, he's, he's another bit of... Shut up, Perry. Why? I didn't say a word. Just because. I don't want to hear anything about... The hero got his ship stolen? By a handful of poor neo-yuppies. <laughs> I'll get the Zuka bus back. And then I'm going to examine the prostate gland of that butthead who took her with her bow. Uh, still as hard as Vanadium. Let's get down to business. Out of his magnanimous generosity, El Topo donates the toilet. A real death trap. <laughs> Make contact with him in El Topo's asylum. Okay, yeah, um... So I'll just explain a few things, um... This is the before mission screen. If I want, I can talk to these people to, um... Basically get a bigger feel for the, for the background of, of the Aqua universe. Or... I can just go straight to Al Topo's Asylum. That's basically how this game. That's basically how these um, pre-mission things work. You can talk to pe you can talk to extra people if you want to. Oh yeah, as you may have noticed from that cutscene, um, this is the second game in. Uh, the first game was called Acumenian Destiny, and I've never played that, but I never really had to. Basically, the stories a bit... well, yeah, you, you saw how long that cutscene dragged on. Well, it's an, I, I really do like the cutscenes of this game, they do drag on a bit. Um, so we're gonna talk to all these people. And, yep. We are developing a chocolate made from highly refined insect protein and fat-producing bacteria. Would you like a taste? Sounds great. Let me have it. Pay attention to the delicate nut flavor. We synthesize that from South Chinese algae. Are there enough amino bits and vitamins in it? Of course! And mood brighteners and glutamate inhibitors that temper the more frightful emotions. <laughs> There's not much to do in the Argentine Basin, is there? We fight for every smile, ma'am. Well, I'm afraid you won't be getting one from me. My friend Leone and I just came over from Florida. But now that brutish ELF station of yours is giving me a throbbing headache. Ah, uh, what's the problem, honey? Are you dense? Extreme low frequency waves turn people's brains into oh, mush. Sure. Talk to Leone. She knows more about it. You can find her at the Neo-Stylistic Whitewater in Vespucci, probably chewing on a chemosynthetic steak. Yep. So this is the shop. 
with lots of different weapons as I get more credits. I can buy stuff. And as the game progresses, more weapons get unlocked. Also, yeah, this is where I equip them. I can also buy new ships. You know, that are faster, more maneuverable, have better shielding. Uh, this is where I save. <laughs> um, yep. Yeah. Next estimation, Topo's Asylum. Do, 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 do. I'm kind of excited by doing this. I haven't played this in ages. I really love the story of this game. So yeah, I can talk to anyone I want to. This is, you know, Al Topo is clearly the main, the main one I need to go. But I can occasionally get side quests by talking to other people. Do you think the breathing gas seems a little... dense? Yeah, it's hard to breathe. My analyzer shows the carbon dioxide ratio is way too high. Mm hmm That's definitely a problem with the mixture. In spite of helium-17 and significant reductions in pressure at the stations compared with five years ago, we're having rising health problems, like micro-bubbles, joint pain, personality changes. Why don't our magicians invent something better? In confidence, I can tell you that there is a rumor of an ultra-fine gas, even lighter than helium. But apparently oh, something went wrong. Scientists of Machina were on their way to Neapolis and had a short stop here, and the breathing gas samples disappeared. Can you believe it? Cases and cases of the stuff, simply gone. Of course I can believe it. Who else might want that stuff? Think about it, man. Who's the biggest shark in our little goldfish bowl? If you want to know more, talk to Frog. She's a light designer working out of Talasso. Oh, I remember this word. I was just talking to Juan. What a paranoid <laughs> isn't he? No doubt he blabbled to you about his <laughs> Stolen cargo like that. Then think about it. Who has the monopoly right now? Entrox Corporation. Energy, transport, and oxygen. Right. And oxygen simply stands for breathing gases in general. Because pure oxygen would be poison at the pressures we live under. That's why we need better air. And why that super gas is worth billions of credits. So you think Entrox is behind the theft? Mister. Those guys down there in the Gulf of Florida have hearts colder than a dead politician. Talk to Shakti. Yeah. She's a store woman at Aatrox and responsible for loading the jump ships. You can find her at Vespucci. <sighs> so, yeah, I was about to say something. Um... Oh yeah, this game definitely doesn't know the meaning of show, don't tell. <laughs> definitely doesn't. But at least the stuff that it's telling is rather interesting. This game kind of got me really interested into science. So... <laughs> How was your vacation in the Clans Union? Surface simulation, light, oxygen, women, good food, women... I heard about your mishap. The succubus was really stolen right from under your nose? <laughs> yeah, man, yeah, they did. I'll get her back. And then... Please, Perry gave me a graphic description. How are things at the front? There aren't as many of them now, but there are still enough bions to give you sleepless nights. Suggestion. <laughs> You'll get a lightning-fast high-tech cruiser. All you have to do is blow away a little bion trash. It's floating around the habitat. Oh yeah, this is a How about level. getting some guys in the orange suits to take care of them? You're just so nice to me. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now listen. I want you to take the toilet and recon the situation. We've just received a shipment of 3D screens and nano robots. The captain of the cargo ship wants someone to hold his hand while navigating the slalom. <laughs> uh, 
First, I want you to meet Commodore Sue. Oh? He's one of those young dynamic Federation army officers. The situation in Neapolis is worse than bad. And your old friend, Admiral Cox, is drifting towards the political scrap heap. Ooh, There's Halloween. definitely something else on the agenda. And that's why they need you. Commodore Sewell will fill you in. When the job's done, come to McGowan. What the Sewell? Let's talk to some other people. Before we talk to Sewell. Oh, Sewell. Boy, Flint! Back again! Like the Gulf Stream, she disappeared into the depths in the north and float secretly back to Florida. That's me, a wanderer. What about you? Oh, I got big troubles. One of those damn Neopolis boys got a hold of me the other day, full of light water. It said we had an architectural problem. He wanted to fix it with a few torpedoes. Uh, sounds like a kook. He heavily armed? No. Uh, El Topper had his ship scanned. It's an old Gorgon-class Atlantis bomber. Easy to crack from the front. I think El Topo's going to hire someone to take out that brain-dead terror tourist. Speaking of which, there's a worthless wise guy named Freeman at Magellan. You might want to talk to him before he takes the job away from you. What makes you think I'm looking for work? Well, for starters, your new boat looks like a water bug with a bad case of gas. If I were you, I'd be making credits as fast as possible. Oh, by the way, Neopolis boy is crossing off the Gamma. A new station. Yeah, they're still building it. Ah, uh, you know, there is some aspects of the story that they really don't explain. Like, exact, like for example, why we're all living underwater. And I do know that from reading the wiki. So maybe I should, maybe I should do that. You know, just to fill you in, because it's kind of interesting. I'll do what Alison Gross does. <laughs> Yeah, I think I'll probably do it right here. Hopefully I won't forget and, you know, embarrass myself by just continuing on without the, the thing. So I'm just going to stop it here. So this is the background of the Aquinox universe as told to me by Wikipedia. So, in the middle of the 22nd century, war materials on Earth became increasingly scarce and as the end of the resources loomed, people began to prospect for resources on the ocean floor. This resulted in the construction of mining stations between the Pacific, Atlantic, and Indian Oceans. Many countries set up these deep sea stations where workers and engineers ex extracted the ocean's treasures. Nevertheless, the output was far from enough to cover an ever-increasing demand. When the natural resources on Earth's surface were depleted, the time of destruction and wars began. In the fight over the planet's last remaining resources, alliances fell apart. Countries became hostile and old conflicts flared up. With increasing cruelty and senselessness, man destroyed the very basis of life on the surface of Earth. After a series of resource wars, nuclear weapons completed the destruction that man had not yet finished with his industrial pollution. When the last glimmer of hope for humanity's survival was extinguished, the people fled into the depths of the oceans. The former extraction stations became the last refuge for those fortunate enough to be able to pay the price of entry into the underwater world. And of course, it doesn't say this here, but that basically means that certain ethnicities were almost completely eradicated from the world because they just weren't enough. Well rich people of those ethnicities. Um, the poorest of the poor were left behind, condemned to die in a desolate world polluted by radioactivity. Life outside the oceans became possible as the continents were flooded by rising sea levels and a harsh nuclear winter covered most of the oceans and the sinking surface land mass of the planet with a layer of radioactive dust, snow and ice many meters thick. A 40 meter lay thick layer of dead organic matter, so called POM layer, covered the oceans, and a single ray of sunlight penetrated the dense particulate layer that plunged the world into a darkness like none other. 
Nevertheless, mankind rose one last time into a new life, the only life in a dead new world. This was humanity's creation, and was now called Aqua. The following events take place in the middle of the 27th century. Today, in the year 2661, mankind lives in gigantic underwater cities. Aqua is divided into political power blocks, such as the Aquitini, as the Aquitini of the capitalist, democratically governed Atlantic Federation, the oligarchy of the Arabic clans unions, and the monarchistic Russo-Japanese shogunate. In the South Pacific lies the tornado zone, stirred up by surface storms, where the anarchistic pack of mercenaries, pirates, buccaneers, and outlaws gathers, ever ready to sell their friends and their souls. A single company has long ago monopolized the many industries necessary for human survival underwater, Entrox. This stands for energy, transportation, oxygen. New technologies allowed fast underwater travel. However, many old technologies are lost or have become useless. For example, due to the high amounts of fallout in the atmosphere, satellite communication and global positioning are impossible, although some organizations are looking for ways to restore the, these abilities. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, see you back in the game. And I'm back. Um, yeah, I'm going to go do that thing where I fill it in later. So let's talk to this guy. How are things in the Argentine Basin? Must be five years since I've been here. There are too many screwballs from Neapolis coming over. Because of the magma eruptions along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, whole hotel chains are going up for them. So what's the problem? They get drunk because they're not used to our booze. <laughs> then the city slippers hang out and act like seahorse cowboys. Every weekend, one of those Neapolis punks runs amok or threatens a jump ship route by racing around the habitats. They even steal ships for crash dive. Steam is building all over Aqua. I don't know how anybody's gonna keep the lid on. And Commodore fucking Sewell. Like, my name is Commodore Sewell. Pleased to meet you, Deadeye. Call me Flint, Commodore. Deadeye is reserved for friends and mortal enemies. Oh, I was hoping we could be friends. I'll come to the point and not waste time. The political situation in Neapolis is, let's say, troubled. The new line, of which I am a member, are progressive thinkers. The old government blocks anything that's fresh, daring, or economically viable. Certain uh, pieces of information have motivated an experiment. I'm not allowed to tell you oh, what it is, right, but I need your help to complete it. Admiral Cox will arrive here in a moment. I suggest a conference. Anyhow, light, Flint. I'll be in touch with you when the time comes. And don't forget your credit card. The shortest way to friendship. <laughs> Boston Harper here. You need wings, huh? <laughs> I think I'll manage alone, Boston. Okay, then. I have a couple of bells with the ground. At least she knows how to trick. You should see the bucket of boats El Miser Topo gave me. A snail moves faster. So what? The hell with it, Flint? Yeah, that's one of my wingmen that was talked about. So here we go. This is kind of like the tutorial mission. So. Hee <laughs> hee So excited. Hopefully the hard drive won't fuck up again. <laughs> Hi, Flint. Where is my Zooka bus? What kind of wreck are you hauling my circuits around in? Oh, oh yeah, this is the old boat. Do you remember the high up a couple of years ago? Just before the Bionce came on the scene? That was awful. But game. this tin can. Couldn't you have asked El Topo if we could get the high up? Okay. Show me what you can do. I've put a navigation point on the junk pile. Yeah, Just press, follow the arrow. I could press um, space to skip these opening scenes, but... Whoops. My mouse is dying. Seriously? Oh, there we go. Here we go. I... For my first objective, I have to destroy all these traps. So 
as you can see, it is kind of like, as I've said before, it's kind of like a first person shooter that in. I don't want to waste any of them because you have to buy them at the start of each mission. Or, well, I never really used top leaders. Attention, Flint. A cargo ship reports contact with a violent unit. I put a navigation point there for you. Move out, baby. The freighter has lost her cannons. She's moving across the debris without defense. You've got to clear the way before she springs a leap. Oh yeah, as you might notice, the music is a bit, well, different. I think that cargo ship captain's head is as thick as a plank. No help him, friend. But I really like it. Cargo ship reports serious trouble. Biot scrap parts floating in its course. Pilot is angry. Hurry up, Flint. So after Cargo ship's captain reports damage to the hull. He can't take the wreckage bombardment much longer. I can feel away from this figure. So it's very bad. Yeah. When I press E to lock on the things. Uh, is there any more strap? No, that's about You're it. You're going to be pleased. Miles yeah. have been sighted at the marker. Watch out. Attack the marked target now. And yep, that's pretty much the first mission. Oh well yeah. So I can I can um continue the mission. Well the mission's done. But in some missions there'll be um like an endless wave of enemies. It, it, at the end of the mission and I can stick around if I want to to keep the captain. But here's the picture. If I if I die at like the end of this bit, even at the end bit, I have to do the whole mission again. So I normally don't opt to do it. Oh uh, yes. So yeah, that's the first mission. I expect this to be 20 minutes, definitely. Yeah. Let's let's see how this goes. Hooray! The hero returns from the Field of Honor. Please, it wasn't the capture of Troy, but we did get rid of the garbage. By the way, as the boss of the Anscat Task Force, you'll be pleased. We have a Biont alert. <laughs> yeah, let's go, boss! My torpedoes are starting to rust in the tubes! Hey, friend. Don't overdo it or you'll be walking the plank. My torpedo tubes shine like a great white's teeth. Let's go playing some tin cans. How do you like these kids, El Topo? Pretty wild, huh? That's okay. Lease is a lot of fun. <laughs> There's a clan's union merchant waiting for you in McGallan. He was attacked by Biont's. He'll tell you where. Report on Fesbucci when you're finished. And we'll get money. And I'm actually gonna buy something. Let me see, I'll sell, sell the Vendetta, sell my torpedoes. 
Oh, uh, oh yeah. So my buzzer. And so the energy thing, I don't need that yet. That's for powering energy weapons like plasma gun. And I'll buy the Vendetta too. And yeah, I guess that'll be it for now. Bye for now. I'm really excited to be doing this. I'll be getting back to Neverwinter Nights soon and eventually uh, Ultima as well. Bye.